Hello everybody, long time no see. And that's not only because my main SSD broke down, but also because I have been working on something big. You see, I would like to create stuff for Surf, and with stuff I mean maps or bonuses, but the Hammer Map Editor is arguably the worst piece of software ever developed, and so I try my best to stay away from it as much as possible. Wouldn't it be nice if making a map would be as easy and intuitive as, mm, I don't know, maybe building something in Minecraft? If there was only a tool that could port Minecraft maps into Hammer. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present the Minecraft to Source Converter, or MTS. Converter. This piece of beautiful code is able to recreate a specific area of a Minecraft world in the Hammer editor. Let's see how it works. For an example, we want to have a nice little tower in our map. So I go into Minecraft and quickly build one. Once I'm happy with my building, I open the MTS converter. It first wants me to define the path of the save file for the Minecraft map, and then the output file for the VMF or Valve map file for the end result. Note that a VMF file is not playable yet. It first needs to be compiled, resulting in a BSP file that is then playable in game. We now define the area the script will work in. For that, we take two coordinates in the Minecraft world that represents two corners of a rectangle that includes everything we want to be ported. We only need the x and z value, as y defines the vertical height of a coordinate, which we will not need to define a horizontal box. Next, the MTS asks for a list of blocks to look for. A good time to look a little bit closer on how the script actually works. In Minecraft, the world is basically a huge grid where every coordinate represents a full block-sized cube. The limit of the y value, meaning the height limit of the Minecraft world, is 320 in positive direction, or upwards, and 64 in negative direction. Each of these cubes holds a block, and only one. A cube that you would consider empty in-game is filled with air, an air block which has no collision, no visibility, no interaction or reaction with or to anything and gets destroyed as soon as you place anything else in that cube. The script now loads the map using the Amulet Core Python library developed by the Amulet team. With it, the map data can be accessed. The script now scans through the defined area, column by column, starting by a Y value of 320 all the way down to minus 64. It looks for the block IDs we have given it. For our example, we would say cobblestone, planks, glass, and to also get the upper ground layer of our super flat world, we would add the grass block. All the block IDs can easily be found online. The MTS converter now scans through the columns. Any given cube can be filled with either a block not specified in our list, then the script moves on to the next without doing anything, or it is occupied by a block of interest, which prompts the script to write down the coordinates and the block's identity before moving on to the next cube. It will do this for all the cubes in the specified area. Afterwards, we got a list of our blocks and the position they are at. That activates the second part of the conversion process, which relies on the PyVMF library written by GoRange Ninja, a surf mapper himself. That allows us to create and modify Valve map files via Python code. The script creates a new map and a coordinate system to translate the coordinates we have in our list. Source obviously doesn't use a coordinate system where every cube equals a Minecraft block, but rather a standard 3D environment based on hammer units which equal inches, with the possibility to be even more precise if needed. But recreating a Minecraft conform 3D grid is pretty easy, the script only needs a constant to know how long each side that makes a cube should be. I found 48 units to be the closest to an authentic Minecraft feeling. Now it's time to fill in the blocks saved in the list. For that, the script creates a cube at the desired position. What texture this cube should have is completely up to you. You can turn textures into Hammer compatible files with softwares like VTF Edit, or you could save yourself a lot of time and use what others have already made, like Marsa, whose texture pack includes all textures from the 1.7.2 version of Minecraft has transparency when needed and even the correct sounds. 
I mean, as correct as the pre-made sounds of Source allow it to be. That of course isn't covering all blocks that have been added to Minecraft in the last 11 years since Mars' texture pack was released. So if you need any other texture, you gotta have to do it yourself. But with the free choice of textures, you can give one kind of block a different appearance in Hammer, which comes in very handy to avoid a lot of cleanup work with blocks like dirt or stone that could already exist beneath your project in the Minecraft world. Of course you are free to give them completely unrelated textures to Minecraft altogether, if you go for a completely different type of aesthetic. And that's it. Now open the VMF and Hammer and you are almost as good as done. We just need one second, just really small things before we are ready to compile and finally play our map in game. For once that would be that PyVMF cannot align textures, so select all, open a texture face editor window, check world and press fit. Also delete all blocks that do not belong to your map, for example because you included some ores that may have been located in the depth beneath your buildings. By the way, Source is not Minecraft, it can't handle a million blocks, in fact it can't handle a fraction of that really. You wonder how many it actually can handle? Well, don't ask Hammer, it lies. All the time. It's not 32,000, it's 4,096. That's it. It may sound a lot, but you will see even small Minecraft areas exceed that instantly. So we need to optimize. Luckily, neighboring blocks with the same texture can be merged. Just bind that function to an easy to access key. I have it on J because I don't think I will ever need to toggle gizmo orientation in my life. Now go through the map and merge as much as you can. Don't worry, that will only take a couple of hours. Also, every face that cannot be seen should have the node row texture to save performance and limits, which can be annoying if the same type of block is sometimes covered by another block and sometimes not. Oh yeah, something I've forgotten earlier, the map for some reason is vertically flipped, so you need to select everything again and flip it back to normal. I don't know why that is, but it might come from the conversion between access labeling schemes between the two engines, but why the f*** does Minecraft use white for height anyway? Please don't forget that the source games need to be enclosed from the void and are not allowed to leak, so create six boxes with the node draw material on all sides, but the map facing one, that should be a skybox or whatever the hell you want it to be really. You also need to add a light environment, a spawn, maybe a teleport and triggers if needed. Same goes for lights and cube maps, particle systems and all the other stuff that PyVMF can't handle or I don't know how to implement in code. And after all of that, finally press F9 to compile the map or at least try to. Because you need to understand that every error message in the compile window is completely made up and totally useless. Almost as useless as the error fixing tool hammer comes with. What you do is take a screenshot and send it to your trusted hammer professor, then don't understand a word he is saying in his response, take a couple more hours of try and error to get it to fucking compile, be underwhelmed how it comes out in game and swear to never touch hammer again. And before I forget it, I tried to pack the script into a standalone executable, but that didn't work, because guess what, I'm not a coder. So you would need to run it from a Python terminal, which requires Python and a software to run it. For the dependencies you can pip install emulate core, but not PyVMF, so the location needs to be defined in the script and on path. You also need the Microsoft C++ build tools you can download here. Running it as a script renders the UI now completely useless, which is okay, as the block size of 48 was hard coded falsely anyway, so there was no way to change it other than with Hammer's pathetic transform tool. And in hindsight, I'm happy the executable does in fact not execute as my icon for it looks like shit for no good reason at all. So all in all I think it's fair to say I made source mapping a lot easier, more intuitive and less time consuming. Okay that's it for me, see you, bye. Oh before I go, huge thanks to House who massively helped me out with writing this code, thanks to Granis and Gorange Ninja and of course thanks to all of my members, the support is greatly appreciated, bye.